Welcome back to the channel. You guys were in the Arctic entryway that we built a few videos back and everyone was commenting saying we need to put a, a window in there, we need to do this, we need to do that. Well, I did buy a window. We always intended to put a window in here. I was up in Fairbanks and able to pick up a window because we didn't have a window available at the time we framed this. So I got a window, I forget what it is. I think it's uh, 24 inches by 48 inches and it's a slider. So we're gonna crop out a section of the studs here on this front wall and we're gonna get that window installed. That's the job. All right, first things first before I get started, maybe you can see behind me here, but we're full of boxes. We've been using the Arctic Entry as storage because when Lena came here, we needed to open up our spare room. That was our storage, we brought it out here. So I'm gonna shift a few boxes around real quick Give me access to the wall and I'm going to start cutting some studs. All right, that really opened up for the area we need to cut. All right, let me get in here. Right now I've got 24 inches, inch and a half down for my two by right there. Inch and a half up there. Okay, that's air going here. Seven inches, and then 27 inches. Good. That's going away. That's gone. And this is gone. Good. Like that. All right, all the lines drawn now. It's just cut it. Time to cut. down. Try to schwack this other one. Oh. Good one. Alright. Number two. You might not be able to see this one on camera because, well, the angle's just bad. Basically, right on line. Wow, that one cut right through the, the board. It normally doesn't cut through there, but that one did.
sweet. Okay. That one needs to be cut a little bit. Okay. That one's good. All right, so based on my measurements, we need, basically we need 48 inches, right? So from inside there to inside there, 48 out there. All right, so we just went to the big box store, picked up a cheap window. This is just a Pella from I think Lowe's or something, but it's a double pane window, slider, nothing fancy. Somewhere on here says rough up right there. Fits rough opening, 24 by 48. Actual size, 23 and a half by 47 and a half. So, over here on my wall for the stud layout. So this stud here had to be cut out just because uh, 48 comes on the outside of this. So this is gonna get married up like that. And then that new, will be the new frame for the window right there. Yep, that'll work out G Jim Dandy. We'll just marry that in there. Like we said, there's no load bearing in this wall. It's all the beam and everything carries all the load in here. So it's no big deal. I've just got to frame out a box for the window. Pretty quick and easy. I was going to take some tapping to get in there. Beautiful. This little sucker right here. We'll go. Right there. Now we're going to confirm our measurements. Inside diameter should be 24, it is. Should be 24 here, a little less than 24. Okay, okay. So we're a little high here, and a little high here it looks like. Bringing that board up. Oh, this ain't gonna tell me much, but probably tell me it's high on this side. Yep, sure is. High on this side. This thing should be fairly level. High on that side a little bit maybe. Oh, that's why. Yeah, that's level. All right, let's nail that one up top anyway. All right, hammer that back out of there. Ah, who says an old man can't stretch? All right, trim that off. I think a better tool for the job would be my my cutoff oscillating tool. I got this thing at a garage sale. It's been amazing. All right. Hopefully that tuned it up enough. We shall see. Good there, good there. Oh yeah, looking good now. Very nice. That quick we boxed in a window. There we go, it's completely boxed in. It's 24 by 48. 
And uh, yeah, I'll just go cut the uh, plywood out, fit the window in. I gotta do a bunch of taping to weatherize the outside. I think I'll do that tomorrow because I wanna do it while it's at least at its maximum warm temperature, so. Hey guys, I don't know if you missed our live the other day, but uh, we've got some uh, land to go look at. Yeah, we announced that we had, were able to buy another 50 acres of land if you missed the live. And we're gonna go check it out right now. Yeah, I'm excited. This is gonna be our first time putting feet on the land. Yeah, we've never ever walked on it. So you guys will be with us for the first time. First time. Look at this gorgeous. Well, it, it was negative six this morning when we got up. It's probably, I don't know. I think it was like nine degrees, maybe not even nine degrees right now, but it's absolutely gorgeous. All right, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. The new property we bought it is only about a mile from where our uh, current house is, so it's really close. We can get there in five minutes. A little branch always makes me think there's an animal on the road. Yeah. We have 20 acres starting here, and then another 20 acres, and then another 10 acres. So all down this whole road basically is 50 acres of the land that we just purchased. 660 feet, another 660 feet, and then 589 feet. I think it's 589. So basically like yeah, 589 feet. Well, six and six is 12 plus almost another six, so 1,800 feet basically, of the frontage road. And then each lot goes back, the 20 acre lots go back almost uh, 1,300 feet. And then the 10 acre lot, if I remember correct, I'm looking right at the plot map here. Yeah, so it's, go, it's basically uh, 589 and 580. So it's like a square. And then the 20 acre lots are that square doubled. So 50 acres total. And it's beautiful, you can see it. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. The reason we picked this land is because it's a lot of aspen trees, which means the spruce trees are thinned out. Because the problem we have here in Toke is a lot of the land is so tightly knit with spruce trees, they're just tiny little, what we call pecker poles, and just tons and tons of them, it's really hard to get through. So this thinned out property, it's a lot thinner and more accessible and just a way better property. So we're so fortunate to have gotten it. We're very excited. Yay. Yes, yes we are. <laughs> Let's take a look out here. Yeah, here's our lot, lot, lot marker. Oh, yay. Look, there we go. Wow, look at all this beautiful land. Hey, look at that nice aspen tree out there. Where? Oh yeah. Straight Ooh, ahead. Look Let's at go that. take a look at it. We've been looking for a really nice aspen tree so that we can make our shelves in our house. Yeah, that's a beaut. We might have to 
harvest that one. Holy cow, look at this. It's a monster. Yeah, this is a great one. Put your arms around it. This is a good tree. Holy. I'm a big I'm a big boy. Yes. This is for this area. This is a big aspen tree. Uh Ooh -wee. That's a nice basically tree. Basically we we're looking to find a really nice big aspen tree to slab on our mill so that we can do flow, uh, shelves. Cause in our kitchen, we have the cabinetry down below, but we're doing shelving up above and we want to do aspen. And we're, so we've been in the, this might be a candidate. It might be a candidate right on Especially our property. Especially down here. I mean, we're talking. Look at the size of that. I mean, it's over 12 inches. I don't know how wide we want our, our shelving, but. Probably about 12 inches. We want to do, well, you got to figure, so we're not going to get a full 12 inches, right? Yeah. So, because we want that live edge on one side. So basically we'll end up milling it in three on three sides and keeping a live edge on one and then slabbing it slabbing off. Slabbing it off. Holy cow, look at all this open land. Oh, look at this big opening back here. Wow, let's walk Holy over there. Cow, so cool. This is gorgeous. Huge opening. Tree. Not as big, but big. So guys, if you, uh, haven't seen it if you go back i don't know three years i did a video on how to buy land cheap in alaska and it, this is exactly how this property was purchased we're alaska residents and every year alaska has an auction and we bid on this property on the auction and we won it we won so we won the <laughs> three lots the 20 the 20 and the 10. yeah and they're all together and like i said before they're less than a well they're maybe a mile from mm -hmm. our house yeah from our current house so it's pretty fantastic pretty fantastic i'm loving it let's check out this opening look at the frosted tips of the trees how crazy that's so cool looking i know it's frosted right on the tops of all the trees it's amazing this morning here's a big pinned out area wow this is a great place for a cabin Man, Ryan, look at the miller. The miller, what are you talking about? Is there a big tree? Oh yeah, look at that big old tree. That's a nice milling tree right there. Yeah, that's a good one. Whew. The trees here are younger. They're not as big as the property we're living on. Yeah. But the because they're thin like this, they should grow, out. grow big, yeah. yeah. But man, the whole thing is nice and thin. You can actually see through the trees. I mean, look, I can see a hundred yards that way. Oh yeah. This is a good purchase right yeah. here. So one of my uh, granddaughter Tallulah's favorite things to do on uh, the properties is called kicking trees down. Check it out. This one's for you, Tallulah. Ready, kick. You think I can do this one? What I see is a recipe for you getting hurt again. Let's see which way it's falling. Looks like it's gonna go this way, so you might get hurt. <laughs> they're they're tough let me see you kick it oh my i'm gonna hurt myself then no you won't cry to kick <sighs> i don't know babe you got it oh hey, look at the top Ooh. fell out <laughs> cry to kick one more time yeah crazy these kid. dead trees let me see about this one cry to kick nope that one's stiff. It's pretty stiff, but that one's a good candidate. Cruddy kick. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it, that thing, that doggone thing's gonna fall on your head. All right, fine. Cruddy crunch. Oh, there you go. That was a hard one. Yeah, that was a hard one. Anyways, just a little fun. <laughs> All right, guys, so this is just one of the 20 acre sections, and we're barely even back in here. Yeah. But I want to go check out the, the other two properties. And uh, we just want to let you know that I think our plan right now is just to sit on these two properties. Well, sit on all three of them, right? Yeah. But potentially our, our long-term goal is the 10 acre section is the one we want to develop first. And I think we're going to throw a couple of cabins on there. Yeah. So if you guys are interested in rentals down the road. Down the road, we might be able to have uh, some short-term rentals where uh, you guys come in, you can hang out on a, a big section of property and Check experience it out. Alaska. Yeah, it's so, gonna be cool. That's our long-term goal, guys. So look for that in the future, but 
we got to get the house we done, still maybe. We have so much we stuff have to so do. We have so much stuff to do. It's like we're two blocking ourselves with work. So <laughs> let's go check out the other properties. Yeah, let's go. Let's do this. Follow me, sir. I'm following along. Try not to look at my pipe, too. Oh, I'm not. I'm not looking at it at all. I know you want to. Right? <laughs> busted. Busted. I don't know if I trust your navigation skills. I don't know. Eventually we'll find the road. Just wandering through the trees. <laughs> See the road. Oh, beautiful property, huh? Oh, it's gorgeous. Good job, babe. Good job. My mouth is cold. It's chilly out here. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Wow, oh, this is beautiful down back here. We'll be coming up on one pretty soon. Oh, right here, right where our Oh, face. right there. So there okay, so that's the 20, and now we're hitting another 20. Yeah, this is. This is the second 20 acres. We gonna get out and take a look? Yeah. Oh Ooh. yeah, there's the marker big time. Oh yeah, <laughs> big time there's, marker. There's the survey pin. Yeah, there it is. Survey marker, no way. Yes. You got, you guys can read that. We got lot eight, lot nine, and lot 10 are the ones that we bought. So this is showing the marker between lot eight and nine. And those are both the 20 acre. Yep, 20 acres. There's lot eight and lot nine. Sweet. Yes. It looks like this property actually has a little swale in it. It, it kind of goes down. Yeah, I see that back there. So pretty cool. Let's go back there. Yeah, let's check it out. Oh yeah, there's quite a drop right here. Oh yeah, look at that. That's interesting. Huh. I don't know if you guys can see that. See the land drops off pretty good right here. Here. Yeah, look at that. Moose tracks. Yeah. I knew that there was more moose up. The further this way, it seems like the moose are more active. Yeah. Yeah, look at that significant drop. Oh, yeah. For flat country, this is a. Oh, wow, man, it just opens up in here. Holy cow. Look at the aspen trees everywhere. It's almost like this used to be an old creek bottom. Look at it going that way. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool in here. And the animals that are back here, the moose. Not so many bears. No. Well, at least we've there never are, seen them. There's, there's bears. We have a very few bears every once in a while show up through here, but I think most of the locals kind of just uh, kill them off because it's, they're not welcome to be around human population. There's plenty of Alaska they can live in. They don't need to be around a bunch of humans. That was the other 20 acres, and so we got 10 more to look at. Ryan found an amazing spot back there. Oh yeah, I found it just, I told, I saw Vaughn off camera, I said, absolutely epic spot for a cabin. You would never know that you were this close to a trail, uh, but back in there, it was just, it thinned out. It was kind of on a little bit of a, a hill, and the trees were just thin enough and short enough. The sun was just blazing down. You can see the sun right now. And I was just imagining a small log cabin staged in there, clear out a small section. We don't want to do it like we did at our house where we cut it down to gravel. If we do anything in here, it's going to be probably on piers and we're going to leave the ground natural. Yeah. And so we'll cut down the trees, but I don't want to disturb the natural ground. Man, it was just epic in there. But that's for a future projects. And uh, right now, <laughs> yeah, we've got plenty. So let's go look at the 10 acres. Okay. Maybe, 
guess I missed that. Oh, right there. Right there. Duh. All right, here's the 10. Yeah, so where's the stake in there? I'm gonna find that stake. Oh yeah, let's go. It's gotta be, oh, I see it. It's right behind this tree back here. Oh, you do see it? Uh-huh. Oh yeah, I see it, okay. There's an opening behind it. Yeah. I guess I should have went around yep. these trees. Would have been wise. Yikes. All right. So now it's the 10 on this side and 20 on this side. Let's see. Yep, there's lot 9 and 10. Yep, that's it. So. Cool. So this is the 10 acres over here. Beauty. Oh, man. This is, I mean, all of this land is just amazing. That was a decent sized tree. Oh yeah. Too many limbs on it though. That's generally means they're gonna be real naughty and not good wood. Oh. Oh man, look at how, oh look at it. Aspen trees. It's a great oh. mix. It's such a good mix of spruce and aspens. So if anybody doesn't know, oh here's that moose. Oh yeah. Man, that moose walked through here this morning, I think. Yeah, yeah it does. Anyways, for those of you that may not know, our vegetation here consists of white spruce and aspen trees. For some reason, and I don't know, maybe someone, maybe someone who knows more than me can tell me why we don't have birch trees here because you get out of town almost in any direction and there's birch trees, but not here in where we live right in Toke. We want to uh, transplant some birch trees here because that literally, I mean, you go out of town, what? If you go out of town, maybe 10 miles, Yeah. there's birch trees everywhere. So right now we have white spruce and aspen trees and we love the aspen trees. Heck, we like the spruce trees, but the mix of the two just makes a beautiful property. A spruce grouse sitting in the tree right here. We're gonna to try to get it on film. I want to leave it where it's at. Oh, it jumped. Oh no. Oh, it got it. It landed in another tree, so I'm happy. That's awesome. So cool. Those uh, spruce grouse. They're beautiful, but they're they're darn tasty. They're darn tasty. <laughs> Anyways, we got. Uh, a bunch of squirrels, obviously you can see the squirrel tracks running around here. We got moose tracks, rabbit, grouse. I saw lynx tracks. So guys, there's just animals everywhere. It's so cool. We had a fox come on our other property last night. Last night. It was on our and, uh, trail cameras. Of course, anywhere there's gonna be grouse and squirrels and, and rabbit. rabbits, there's gonna be predators, so, <laughs> so cool. See it going down here? Oh yeah. Can you see the survey? Uh, there's all kinds of stakes all the way down. Oh yeah, all the way down. Yeah. On this side. Yeah, I see a ribbon there, but that can't be. Oh, right there it is. Oh yeah, I see it. Because I knew it was going to be inset a little bit from the corner. From the corner. Yeah. It's really awesome. Well, at least we can easily find them. Oh yeah. Yep, lot 10. Lot 10. The corner. 
Well, I guess we own a lot of trees now. <laughs> I guess we own a lot of trees. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed coming along with us on our property walk. This is the first time we've ever set foot on this land and we're very excited about it. Yeah, we're super excited. It's absolutely beautiful property. And it's so exciting to Great see the possible potential, potential yeah. to be able to pop, bring you guys out. Uh, you know, some of you might want to come out to Alaska if when we get these cabins up, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. But we got to get back to installing that window in that Arctic entry. A lot of you guys talked about putting a window in there. We got to get back to getting it done. Let's do it. All right. it's the next day I decided just to stop last night this morning it is time to cut the plywood out and get the window installed all right then that worked out real nice and let there be light get some of that dust dusted off of there so I can get the Tape to stick. All right, let's flash this off, get the flashing done, then we can get the window in. Breaking out the heat gun to get this flashing to stick. Here we go. It's like 14 degrees outside right now, so it's just cold enough so that this uh, flashing needs to be heated up. Get it tacky so that it'll stick. If you haven't seen me do windows before, I use uh, butyl tape, any sort of butyl tape, this uh, you know rubberized tape stuff. I'll flash the bottom, come, making sure to come up the sides a good bit, and then both sides, and I make sure to wrap it down over the side so it covers you know inside the sill plus over the edge onto the siding. And then these corners, I'll just take a square piece, and I'm going to fold it in half. And then I stick it in the corner, I stretch it around the corner so that it's a waterproof corner. And that's just how I do it. I know there's probably plenty of ways to do it. The zip tape, everybody seems like the popular thing now. The zip tape's pretty cool stuff. It stretches real good. The stuff they use for window flashing, window door flashing, but this is a product that I got at the you know orange store, the big, you know, the big box store. This is the Henry. And uh, You'll see how it works here in a second. I just bend it. I bend it and stretch it. Pull it out around. Yeah, there. That way there's no tear in the corner. And the window can go in there no problem. Warm it up, make sure it's going to stick. And I'll do that for both corners. And it's a sealed waterproof corner. All right, looks good. I'm happy with that. Time to put a window in. All right, here's our window. Let's get it cut open. Screen goes to the inside. Well, before I put the flashing on, I forgot that I was gonna nail around this because since I cut the board out, I really need to nail around. Just to make sure that everything's secure. Yeah, I figured it needed to be nailed. You can see it getting pushed in. There we go. Now I'll just go ahead and reflash it. I'm no big deal. I got the corner corner set in real nice. So I'll just reflash it. No big deal. That's good, that'll reflash the holes. Oh, we knew that was gonna fit. 
thin one. We knew it was going to fit, right? Snug. Windows in place. We just got to get a level and level it out. Oh, let's see what it says in here. Come down on that side. So this side looks pretty doggone good. I'll go outside and check it, but it looks pretty good. It's got a gap there. Yeah, it looks like it's fitting pretty good. Oh yeah, it's real good. Very nice. All right, I'm just gonna go around and screw it off. Then we can flash the outside. Okay, try to keep this flashing as warm as possible. Bring it out one piece at a time. All right, heat it up. Time consuming when you have to heat it all up, but there's one, I got three more to go. Final piece. All right, that's the window. All sealed up. All right guys, so I'm back in the Arctic entry here. You just saw me install the window and uh, I just wanted to kind of finish this space off a little bit more. So I'm working on the electrical. I had pre-wired for a light directly above me and an outlet here, which I could jump power off of for outlets outside. So let me show you around. All right, so directly up is gonna be our uh, overhead light. So that'll actually be a motion sensor light on a, uh, like a flush mount motion sensor light. And then if you come down here on this side, this is like the back of the building or of the house. That is an exterior outlet. That will be where we'll plug our trucks in. You can see out the window there, fancy new window, that our trucks will plug in right there. And then if you look to the front, here's our door. So we'll go out the door onto our deck. And right there, I'm wiring in another outlet. That, that outlet will be kind of anything we want to run on the deck. Now inside here, you can see right there that I've got an interior outlet there. And if, if I want, I could jump off that for extra outlets. But I don't see us needing a lot of outlets in the Arctic entry. So we do have power in the Arctic entry. I just wanna show you guys what I've got going on. I know a lot of people were saying, oh, you need a window. We already had it planned. And we have some lighting planned, some outlets planned, exterior outlets. So we'll have exterior outlets around the house. There's gonna be exterior outlet on that side of the house, this side of the house, on the back house, side of the house, there's one. On the porch, we have one. And so we've got, what, one, two, three, four, five exterior outlets and uh, plenty of power. I'm going to wire in these outlets right now, get everything finished up with um, GFCI outlets that are in boxes designed for out so outside use. One, now let's go do the other one. Alright. We're using this, I don't know, by Hubble exterior <clears throat> GFCI weatherproof in cover, in use cover, one of those covers you can close while the extension cord's still plugged into it. Pretty standard from the big box stores. There we 
we go. Exterior outlets are done. Now we got a place to plug in our cars. Okay guys, so you've seen me put in the window. I've put in some electrical. You saw me put in the exterior outlets. So the Arctic entry is really coming along. We are gonna insulate the walls at some point, but right now, this winter, I don't see that happening. It's just not a priority. But something that is a priority, I got a little project I wanna show you guys inside. It has something to do with our wood stove. Let's go take a look. All right guys, I'm back in the house. Got the wood stove behind me. I told you I got a little something, a project I want to get done. It's something we've been needing. So every day we go out to the woodshed. You guys saw where the woodshed's at. We go out to the woodshed. We fill a wheelbarrow full of wood. We park it outside the back door and bring it in for the fire. So what I'm going to do, out of all the parts you see laying on the ground right there, I'm going to turn all this into this. All right, here we go. All right guys, so that's a pretty cool project. That is how I make a wood rack out of black iron pipe. That's half inch black iron pipe and all the little fittings and stuff. So that's about three days worth of wood and it's gonna save us from making multiple trips out to the woodshed. Now we can just fill this up. Every few days we can just come in and fill it up and we can just go. It's kind of like our solar system. It should run for three or four days. So pretty good, pretty good little rack guys. I appreciate you watching our video today. That's all I've got for you. We got the electrical done in the Arctic entry, the window put in, the wood rack built. Guys, we're making progress on the homestead here. We sure do appreciate you following along with us, and I'll see you on the next one.